عصف الأنين بداخل قرتي قد ذاك قلبي من أسى محلتها وكم كرهت مصابها لكن رأيت الخير يسكب في أنا كم مرة قد ضقت من عظم البال بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين ما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Since the Gaza conflict, my Lord, aid them, we have noticed and found many trenders. What I mean by trenders is those who jump upon the trend, similar to like Twitter was trending. And the Gaza conflict has been an opportunity. For many businesses, influencers, to expand their brand and to further their own interests. Lil Asaf al Shadid, Bismillah. And I'll give you some examples in just a second. I have been sent many videos by brothers who frequent TikTok. As you know, I'm very inactive on TikTok. And brothers have been sending me some boxing promotion. And this promotion has jumped on the trend, forwarded, you know, Gaza as the main reason or connection or promotion for said event. And I sent this brother a direct message, you know, and I don't want to go into it, saying, look, some brothers have made me aware of videos. I've been discussing the issues within the charity sector, which those within the sector also admit there's some issues. Some issues. And ultimately, he's a trender. He is a trender. And if you see on screen, human appeal are just, you know, vultures. Let's just say they don't care how um, their donations come, whether it's morally correct, whether it's despicable in terms of what event it is. They'll just jump on the bandwagon. So we had back on the 22nd of December 2023, Gaza game night dinner. So Gaza game night. OK, and it was a dinner. And during that time, Gaza was being struck. Food parcels were being thrown because there was a blockade. Many shuhada lost their life, but whatever they were up north or down south, they were having a game. They were enjoying themselves, dressing up, caked up, dancing, and our brothers and sisters were being slaughtered. And this is one said example. The second example we've got is a brother who we're referring to now. On the 2nd of March 2024, he had a boxing event called Ceasefire. Right, ceasefire with the Palestinian flag behind, as you can see. And what is a ceasefire linguistically? It's a noun, which is an agreement usually between two armies to stop fighting in order to allow discussions about peace. Okay, so come back to me now. So you had Gaza Games Night, Human Appeal, as you know, the vultures, the capitalistic charities jumped on it. Yeah, 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 you know. And there's an incentive for many of these charities, which I'm going to get to as well. So they obviously, no morals, no principles, no consideration for what's happening in Gaza. Gaza Games Night, let's get behind it. Okay, and obviously what's happening with the funds, that's a different story. How much money has been raised collectively by these charities since the conflict? This brother used Gaza to promote his brand, to promote his show. At the time, even prior to the uh, 2nd of March, when he was promoting the event and, you know, the lack of Islamic values and ethics, mismatch of values, swearing, dancing, music, you name it. And you're using the Palestinian and Gaza conflict? Are you that insensitive? And then ceasefire on top of that with the Palestinian flag and to profit from their misfortune. Because that's what it is. You didn't have to use their name. It's a boxing promotion. Number two, the mismatch of values, the lack of Islamic eth ethics and values, detachment, should I say, dancing, music, swearing. And, you, and you're using the Palestinian Gaza conflict to promote such shows? And don't you have any shame? Let's continue on, right? Human appeal. Gaza Games Night, they put their... Name in front. As I said before, this is, this is the incentive. I'm going to call it spade for spade. This is the incentive. 
It's a huge incentive. What is it? Gift Aid is a scheme available to charities and community amateur sports clubs in means that they can claim extra money for HMRC. That's why you're finding charities opening up every bloody week. There's a new charity every other week. I'm going to go into that later. The charity or CAS. C can claim an extra five twenty extra twenty five p for every pound you donate. That's as long as you pay the basic rate of tax and make the donation from your own funds. This means gift aid can increase the value of your donations by twenty five percent. So you can help the charity do extra work at no cost to you. Gift aid is important for charities and means millions of pounds extra going to the charity sector or go to the charity sector each time an eligible taxpayer donates and forgets to tick the gift aid box. The charity misses out. So let me just add something. Right, it's not to say that. Every single donation, gift aid is automatically applied because they don't tick the box. But this is a huge incentive, a huge incentive. And it's supposed to go back to the charity. But, that, but then they can cover their costs. They can cover, obviously, you know, additional resources. It should go back to the charity. But then ultimately, however they use it, it's not their money, is it? And this is a huge incentive. Huge incentive. As you can see on screen, we've got... An article from Al Jazeera, six days after their show, as you can see where the arrows over, six days after. And it just mentions about the great bitterness that they are facing. And then, as you can see, it says, تَعْرِفُ بِالْأَرْكَامِ عَلَى الْمُعَانَةِ النِّسَاءِ الْغَزَّةِ خِلَالِ الْحَرْبِ That, learn about the numbers, that about the suffering, right, of the Gaza women during the war. Right, during the war. And it mentions, وَتَتَجَرَّ عَنْ نِسَاءِ الْفَلِسْتِينِيَّاتِ فِي الْغَزَّةِ الْمِرَارَةِ الْحَرْبِ That the Palestinian women have suffered a lot due to the bitterness of this particular war. And they are risking their lives to feed their children. They're risking their lives. And what does he mention? That they are others that have lost their lives due to childbirth because there's not much medical supplies. There's not much what? Medical supplies. And in connection to the numbers, it mentions 63 women, including 37 mothers, are martyred every day. This is up until March. And that is basically two mothers a day. Two mothers a day. I can assure you, hundreds of millions of pounds have been raised. Hundreds of millions of pounds for this campaign. And for UK charities, right, you talk about unity of the Ummah and whatnot, you charities can't even unite. Because why? It's a huge incentive. I'll tell you something, gift aid is the ultimate Achilles heel. You don't want to unite, because how are you going to distribute the gift aid? That's what it is, isn't it? Gift aid is a huge incentive. Now, if we work out, right, how much gift aid that they potentially have, remember, you have to tick it to get it. We're talking a lot of money from the government. Hey, Jamasi, right, His Majesty's Revenue and Customs, are topping up each year, I think the brother, um, it's not even each year, to be honest, but the brother, one of the brothers who are in the charity, don't get me wrong, I'm speaking to brothers in the charity sector who know what they're talking about, and they give me advice. He says to me that when it comes to gift aid, okay, a gift aid is collected as and when a charity submits a claim. So it's not even every year, I thought it's every tax year, but one brother who's in the uh, charity sector said it can, be, it can be weekly, monthly, quarterly, or even after a number of years, up to three years, right? Up to three years. So these capitalist charities, when they are jumping on the bandwagon like Human Appeal, and we're going to get to his video as well, Human Appeal, Human Appeal. And again, Human Appeal have no morals and ethics, right? Gaza Games, they put their company next to it. These boxing promotions, they put their next, ne names next to it. Human Concern International uh, paying influencers. Even the influencers in the UK. Most of these charities, this 100% donation policies, is it really 100% on every donation? When we look at Kitab al don't worry, we're going to get to Kitab al mate. Like I said... You could, okay, now you're going to present Qayas and, you know, don't worry about it. But this is a key issue here, that charities can't unite, cannot unite. And you're speaking about a global ummah uniting, when you charities or you capitalist charities can't even come together. You can't even come together. Assalamualaikum everyone, it's TV here. Alhamdulillah, after a massive successful show in Sheffield on Saturday night, we managed to raise a staggering 45,000 142 pound this is for our brothers and sisters in palestine our charity partners human appeal will now be distributing um, hot meals in the next coming few weeks so if you want to see all the updates make sure you 
add me right now on snapchat which is tb.promotion the reason being as you know tiktok and um, instagram their algorithms are not great for the palestine charity distribution so make sure you add me tb.promotion so alhamdulillah we'll be delivering hot meals to our brothers and sisters in palestine with the 45,142 pound raise from the unleash show 45,000 pound that you raised or above you've donated to human appeal which i'm sure you did no doubt about it, I'm sure you did. So if you have, just show documentation. Look, showing a few photos and videos doesn't cut it because that's £45,000. Transfer that into, you know, uh, Jinea Masriya, like Egyptian pounds. It's a lot of money. Transfer that into shekels. That's a lot of money. £45,000. All of these charities are breaking the bank. And then think about the gift aid. What, whoever, uh, one out of five that's ticking, they we're talking tens of millions of pounds. A lot of money. Okay, you know, they'll have to pay their costs and whatnot, but imagine how much money it is. Think about it. And all of this, Gaza's trending. Gaza's the cash cow. Everyone, every brand, every influencer, every company, Gaza, Gaza. Because ultimately it brings them attention. It increases their recognition. And we all know Gaza's the cash cow, so they will capitalize and use emotional blackmail and know that the brothers and sisters are feeling pain and they will take advantage of that so that they, you donate generously and as you know they would have a nice healthy gift aid coming whenever they claim it whether it be a week's time month's time or whenever it may be now let's just watch a un uh, video <laughs> أربعتاشر مرة ننزح شجاعية ظاهرة رفح دير ثلاث مرات قبل الدير خانيونس مرتين طب لو وقت إيش Over the last days we've seen new evacuation orders being issued by Israeli forces in Khan Yunus and Dir Abala area Over 100,000 people have been affected by these orders pushing them into an area that now represents only 11% of Gaza's total area. It is overcrowded, there is no space in this, uh, in this tiny patch of land. يبدو ضربونا صاروخنا وواحد كل اللي انت نرتاح أما إلنا سنة في نزوح وموت أحمر بكف يا زلمة We have no tents, there's no sanitation, there's not enough water The water supply has dropped by 70% in Dirabala because the water wells have been affected by the evacuation orders we're struggling to operate, we cannot move around easily because of the overcrowding. Our warehouses in many instances have been are falling within evacuation zones and we're having difficulties bringing our supplies in from uh, the crossing points into Gaza. So you watched, the UN are admitting they're having difficulties bringing supplies in. The UN are admitting that it's difficult to move around. The UN are admitting that water supplies more than 70% of a certain area there al Balah are not getting the adequate amount of water. They're moving around constantly. Constantly they're moving around. Now I like to ask all these charities, right? If you have teams on the ground, okay, stick a high vis on and you've got teams on the ground. These same teams are going to be affected. These same teams that you have, you're, 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 you're dropping the ocean, you, you UK charities. The UN. You know, UNWRA, UWFP, this, uh, what's it called, um, this is a part of the Palestinian uh, wing. They're saying that it's difficult for us to move around, we're difficult getting supplies, and we're, it's, it's extremely difficult for us. So, like I mentioned about the charities that oversell, that overpromise and underdeliver, show me a few videos, that's fine. But you know the amount of hundreds of thousands and millions of pounds that you've got. What's happening? Okay, are we saying spend it all within a week or two? No, we're not. You've had 10 months. I'd like to ask all these charities, right, from the start of the campaign, when the Zionists launched their aggression on Gaza, how much money have you raised? It's a simple question. To each of you charities, how much money have you raised? And those who are saying 100% donation policy from 
this campaign, I'm not speaking about your other campaigns, Yemen and Bangladesh, may Allah aid them, support them and, and grant them refuge from the floods. That's another thing. As I said before, it's every charity knows that Gaza is the cash cow. They know it because of the religious significance. So back to my question. Every single charity that has raised money from the start of the campaign until now, how much money have you raised? How much money have you raised since the start of the campaign? Let's be honest. Then top that up with a nice 25% gift aid. The uh, UN report, it mentions, and this is uh, from the OCHA, Muhannad Hadi, humanitarian coordinator for the occupied Palestinian territory. Successive mass evacuation orders issued by Israeli forces amid hostilities have displaced 90% of Gaza's dead residents since October 2023. So the same Ghazawis that are working on the ground, who are struggling to get supplies in, who are struggling to move around. If the UN are struggling, I assure you, your partners on the ground are struggling. I don't give a damn about the high visits. It don't make a difference. They're all in the same predicament. So stop fooling the brothers and sisters. Stop these cheap marketing strategies after multiple times exposing them to harm and depriving them of the essentials to survive, right? During August alone, the Israeli forces have issued 12 evacuation orders on average once every two days, forcing as many as 200,000 Palestinians to move again. Just yesterday, this is October the 22nd, tens of thousands of civilians in four neighbors in Deir al-Bala and Khan News were instructed to leave humanitarian staff of several UN agencies and NGOs were also affected. So just... And these are international NGOs, this ain't just on UK. So even your staff members are affected, all right? Then it mentions, along with their families, humanitarian workers play a critical role supporting other displaced Palestinians. If evacuation orders are meant to protect civilians, the fact is that they are leading to the exact opposite. They are forcing families to flee again, often under fire with the few belongings they carry, on to, uh, carry with them, into ever-shrinking area that is overcrowded, polluted, and limited services, and like the rest of Gaza, unsafe. How is it that 70% that when you show those tr tankers that come, we're under the impression that they now have water. But if 70% of the water in Deir al-Balah was... Uh, uh, decreased, then all that money that we've been giving you that you're showing these nice little photos in different areas. And even then, should you be coordinating logistically and sending your team around? L let's be frank, you don't have that organisation. You don't have that logistical organisation to be, be sending groups around because it's not that easy to move around as the UN are finding it difficult. So once again, it's just this marketing strategy, isn't it? A severe uh, chlorine uh, shortage for wa water disinfection, with reserves expected to last only one more month, is fueling disease, skin infections, hepatitis and new polio. Civilians are exhausted and terrified, running from one destroyed place to another with no end in sight. This cannot continue. International humanitarian law demands that the parties protect civilians and meet their essential needs. The way forward is as clear as is urgent. Protect civilians, release the hostages, facilitate humanitarian, humanitarian access, agree on a ceasefire. Okay? Now... That's that. Let's go into now um, the Islamic Shari um, argument. Now, this is where a lot of these charities, and I've heard it, well, I've heard it more than once, and I'm not even lying, that they are uh, amilun. They are amilun. They are workers, so they can take a cut of the zakat, right? And you know zakat has to have an element of tamlik, right? Tamlik. And we're going to get to a full zakat uh, breakdown. As I said, you know, those who study zakat know how how delicate it is about the, you know, the nisab, about the mithqal of, 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 of dahab and fidda, about who's mustahiq or who are mustahiqin, uh, about issues regarding who are sadaqa, uh, uh, sadaqa farida eligible for. And this is the incentive. Let's, let, let me be honest. The incentive for these charities is that they have gift aid, which is the main one, and they take a cut from the zakat, which they're not entitled to. Because if you want to look at the, the verse itself, and anyone that wants to have a discussion with me regarding this verse, go to the tafsir. I've got here now, Kitab al-Um by Imam al-Shafi'i. Here, Kitab al-Qasm uh, al-Sadaqat, here, all here. Then you got Jima' uh, al-Bayani Ahl al-Sadaqat. So we go into this, right? Are you really amilun? Are you? No, you're not. So even TB, I don't know how much you've read, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. I make a dua that anyone that is profiting from the Gaza conflict, whoever it may be, whether it's a little or a lot, may Allah curse you, may Allah curse your wealth, may Allah show us your disgrace in this world and the hereafter. Amin. I say this now, and we're going to go into the technical evidences. This is Kitab al umm al-Shafi'i, okay? You're not Amilun. You are not Amilun, okay? And if, you're, if you agree you're Amilun, then what about the other seven that Imam Shafi'i goes into? SubhanAllah Adim, stop playing with the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I know gift aid is an incentive. I know gift aid is an incentive. I know uh, taking from the zakat is an incentive. 
That's why there's so many of you mercenaries around because it, this is what's really driving you, right? And you know Gaza is a cash cow, right? You know Gaza is a cash cow. So as you can see on screen, we got Kitab al Um by Imam al Shafi'i. And Imam al Shafi'i mentions, عليها, the ones that have been ordered to collect it, min min that they are the ones that have been employed or who are Amilun, who are workers, who are in charge of collecting it from the people, right? And then he mentions, and under the footnotes, he mentions that the, the Arifin are those who are connected, who are like the ones that are administrating it as such. Okay? And then he mentions that um, that and as for the caliph or the khalif and the governor of this great region who is in charge of collecting it, a worker below him, meaning an amilun, a duna, okay, uh, the one that obviously or, or, or requests the worker to get it, he doesn't have a haq to it either, meaning the zakat, he can't just take it, okay. But remember, Imam Shafi gets to the end. And uh, and as for the one that house the governor, the wali, again, all centralized, all centralized. And, that, and we'll go into another question I'd like to ask as well. To collect it, okay, who is rich, uh, does not need his help, right? He has no right to the share of it. And he mentions regardless whether the Amilun are rich or poor or from the strangers. And if, now look what he mentions now. He says, إِذَا وَالُهَا فَهُمْ Amilun. If they are representatives of the, the Khalif or the Wali, then they are Amilun, right? Then he mentions at the end, وَيُعْتَ أَعْوَانُ إِدَارَةِ الْوَالِ صَدَقَةِ بِقَدْرِ مَعُونَتِهِمْ عَلَيْهَا وَمَنَفَعَتِهِمْ فِيهَا And then they are given, right, in, according to the administrator, obviously as being a, a, a amil um, of the charity, meaning this صَدَقَةُ uh, الْوَاجِبَةِ uh, according to their assistance, their معونة uh, and their benefit right and they benefit and it also goes into the the different sections like al amirun and whatnot so you go we got al um by imam shafi'i so you go we got kitab al um by imam al shafi'i rahmatullahi now i don't want to stress on this point more than i already have but there are going to be many many brothers who are going to take this particular pillar of our faith and abuse it like you find those who have taken the pillar of Hajj and abused it. This you're going to find, and we're going to get into soon, about these Sharia councils who are not following exact protocols and abusing their power that they have. It, 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 it happens. And at the end of the day, again, I'm not accusing anyone of usurping the money for their own personal gains. I'm not accusing anyone of that. Regardless how much penny appeal come in the news, you know, of abusing the donors, regardless how many times human appeal are being investigated by the Charities Commission and found out to have, you know, mismanagement of funds, uh, regardless of others who, you know, forgot to report that they were the CEO uh, and, and, and various others, right? Various others, you know, crisis aid and it goes, the list goes on and on and on and on and on. Um, what we say is that be in the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching and if you are abusing, and not being entirely transparent, it will show later down the line. I promise you. If not in this world, in the hereafter. But I pray and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make dua, that Allah disgraces you. Whoever abuses the pillar of zakat, who hasn't even studied the pillar of zakat, let's, let's leave everything else, right? Whoever hasn't even studied the pillar of zakat, right? Which is a deep science in it within itself. Then I promise you, that if you are taking advantage of people's generosity and the believer's generosity, may Allah curse you in this life and in the hereafter and disgrace you with such a disgrace that you will be an example for the rest of those deceivers and manipulators. So simple as that. And it is a business at the end of the day. That's what you find in so many different charities opening because they know the benefit, especially in the West, you know, gift aid and, you know, they could use the sort of abuse of the, the zakat principles. They'll always have someone that, you know, they'll, they'll find a fatwa for everything these days, don't you? But like I said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching and that's, that's all I'm going to say. So take care of yourselves.
ليس الغريب غريب الشام واليمن إن الغريب غريب الأحد والكفن إن الغريب له حق لغربته على المقيم في الأوطان والسكن سفر بعيد وزاد يبلغني وقوتي ضعفت والموت يطلبني ما أحلم الله عني حيث أمهلني وقد تماديت في ذنب ويسترني تمر ساعه 